Hello, hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Uh, I don't know if you remember this from the sneaky peek a little bit ago, maybe within the week, uh, but everybody wanted to see me make this. It's a one page wonder, 12 by 12 Stamperia paper. <clears throat> it's held together like that. I cannot remember what kit this came out of. It was a beautiful kit. Now, some of these things here came from a, a digital that I've got. But the colors went so well that I just kind of blended a few things together. You know, <laughs> you know how I do. And then they tuck under here. And then you just kind of fold it shut. Now, this is the front because it has like a little tag pocket here. And then you have the one that's inside here like that. Uh, the paper pad that I'm going with today is purple, so it's lilac. Uh, let me pull it over here real quick. Everything's wanting to come with it. Okay. <laughs> we have this one. It is the Lilac Flowers Stamperia Pad. I had it a long time ago. It was really beautiful. Uh, actually, I think that I did my very first journal out of it this is my first journal and as you can see uh i used quite a bit of the papers in here actually this is the paper we're going to work with today i did like a double kind of a a side tuck uh, i don't know what you would call that it's just a double side tuck <laughs> i may i may be able to show you how to do that really quick with quickly at the end but we are going to use some of these uh little tags that are in here to be the uh, holders that hold the pages shut or the flap shut I should say but yeah I really enjoyed making this I love purple so that really went <laughs> and suited me to a T so I don't know if you want to see this paper pad I'll go ahead and flip through it really quick um, you have pretty little butterflies on this side of course that's you can probably harvest a few things that are very pretty from this side. And then you've got the journal cards, which I think one of the journal cards is going to be worked into our, our kit today. So I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead. I really like the butterflies. I think I'm going with a butterfly theme. And I really like these three. Now the outside... I have not chosen anything for yet, so I probably need something for it. I think we'll go with this one for the outside. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make a tag out of it, or a, a pocket, I mean. So, we'll just harvest as we go through here. <laughs> now, this is what the back side of that one looked like. Uh, here's a gorgeous piece of lilac. Mm. Little music paper and some purple envelopes. And then you have like, that's the light uh, shade of the writing. And then you have the dark shade of the lining on the back time. There's not too much going on in it, but it does have some beautiful elements. Now here is just envelopes um, or letters, I mean. So, or what is it? Is it a patchwork? I see sewing around the outside of some of these. So I'm not sure. I think it's a Mod, mod Podge. Then you have this. Oh, I love this. <laughs> it's like a. Um, almost like a cement. Stucco. Kind of a background with splotches on it. I'm not really sure. Now here's the little tags. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to find something. This one definitely. Something that's not going to. Uh, fight against the pattern that I've got. It may be this one and the one next to it. Right? I'm eyeballing the rest of them as I'm standing here. <laughs> and the back side of this one's more that writing. Uh, you don't have nothing going on on the back side of a lot of these. Uh, I, I, I think I'm going for this one up here. Yeah, I think I'm going for that one. I needed three to hold my three sides shut. And I don't know if you got to see the rest of these. That's what they look like um, before I mold it. And then, like I said, it's just got that little tiny purple writing on there. You have a bookmark, an envelope, a couple extra butterflies, a pansy. 
and two more journal cards that go this way. I couldn't use them, so I just kind of let them go. And you have two sides of trim <clears throat> that you can put in here. I don't know that I would use the trim. I don't think I'm going to be able to. And here's a bunch of postcards, music pages, letters, kind of like a little overall. Oh, on the back side of this one was another one of those dark purple pages. And then this one had a lighter purple in the same kind of pattern. This one's gorgeous. I remember doing things with it before because you got the lilacs on it and some hydrangeas, I believe, and some roses. It's got a little bit of everything and the butterflies. I do see a pansy down here, so it's got a pansy. And on the back side is just butterflies. And then here is the one that I showed you my book. This is the outside cover of my book. This is what I use, this whole edge here. And then I can't remember what I did with that part, if I made a pocket out of it inside or, or what I did with it. And then it's just got a solid purple back. That's why I didn't feel like I was losing anything because it was just a solid purple. Then you have this one with all the writing and more little clusters of beautiful flowers. And on the back side, it's only got that one cluster at the top like it does on the front. And then the back page has get, got the more writing. So you see what I mean about there's not really much activity in it. You have one page of ephemera mixture. You had one page of tags. You had one page of journal cards. And that's about it. That's <laughs> Some of them will give you more, and, or you have more on the actual pages. Some have the little phrases with them. So I've already measured this out, what I need. So we're going to put two side. Got all kinds of books laying over here on my chair. <laughs> all right, so these are the ones that we are working with. And if you caught my uh, correspondence clusters, <laughs> I couldn't resist calling them that. These are my correspondence clusters. Now, actually, I think I picked one of these out for my front. So I'm going to have to debate what I want to go where. Okay, we'll see what we can do. We got to cut all of these out. And then we have this. Now, our numbers for this are, it's four and eight going across in your scoring. Just remember, it's a whole 12 by 12. You don't have to do a thing to it other, <laughs> other than peel it out of the pad. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming to visit me today. I just got into it, you know, like I, I always do. Um, on the back side of this one is just solid purple. So you've got all of this writing space inside of this one that is not going to be disturbed at all. All right, we're going to go ahead and go with four. And then I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to turn it because that's the way I have to do it with my score pad because I don't have, you know, full extension. I only have up to six inches. So I have to make do. And then we have another four. And, and it, in other words, in your world, it's four and eight. <laughs> then and the, you turn it 90 degrees and your top is going to be three and a half. And your bottom is going to be nine. You're going to do three and a half and nine. Now, what I'm going to have to do is turn it this way to do my three and a half. And it's going to be right there. And then I'm going to have to turn it again. And if I want to score at nine, and this is 12, I have to do it at three. <laughs> there is multiplication <laughs> and math in crafting. Don't let anybody fool you. <laughs> There are some that can get away with piddling, and they're just coming up with it on the fly. <laughs> some of us others have to deal with it and, and make do. Okay, now what was this one? I forgot what it looked like. I didn't round any corners, I don't believe. Nope, didn't round any corners. Oh, I did. I did there. Did I do it on the inside? Yes. All right. Each corner got rounded. Then I have to cut. Yep, yep. Okay, I got it now. I didn't write that part down. You have to cut the score lines out of the top up to that score line and then come down to that score line. And you're cutting 
each one of them out just so you have room in there. So I'm just basically cutting on each side so I don't lose that much, but I am giving it room. Okay. I haven't figured out what to call this. I don't know if this is something I saw from scrapbooking with me, but more than likely I'll give them credit. I don't know if I, I revamped it a little bit for my mind or, or what, but I had to have seen it on their channel. Oops, I'm going to have to lay that down so I can get a steady cut. I think I, I think I, think I bowed in a little bit on this one here. I'm trying to keep them as uniform as possible. Whew, all right. <clears throat> one last one. I'm going to do this. And then you can ink these if you like. I think I'm going to go over here and grab me some kind of purple to go with it. I got to find one that matches it good, though. All right. And then I usually just pull that up and cut that. Cut those little tails off. Okay. <clears throat> as long as you cut it at least on the line or a little past it, you're good. You'll notice if you didn't. <laughs> when you when you go to fold it, you'll know that you didn't go up to, because you'll see those little nubs sticking over. Okay, so each one of these corners is getting rounded. I think I'm going to do a full round. I'll just go ahead and do that. Okay. <laughs> Figure that's the easiest way to go about it. Yeah, me and Mom, we went to get us a little snacky at uh, Burger King in Verona. Ugh. Then we always go and get us a, a mini blizzard. <laughs> It was needed today, as hot as it is. I'm sitting here, and I'm just, I'm going to have to put my thermometer down a little bit. It's hot. Ooh, I went out and hung some clothes, so I don't guess that really helped. Yeah, I live in the country, so. <laughs> and when we don't hang the clothes outside, it, we usually will have to do it in the basement. But we try not to do that in the summer, because it's, it's cool down there. But it never gets warm enough to really do anything. Okay, I picked a outside color sweet plum to edge everything with and go into creases and to do the outside of all of my tags and uh, journal cards. So I've already done that with the outside and then these little cracks here. Now we're going to fold it up <clears throat> and we're going to do some more of that. Oop, there's my bone folder or whatever this would be called. Now see, there's a little bit of that sticking out. And I told you, you would notice. I think I went too far as actually <laughs> what happened with me. Um, but you want to be able to have a little bit of room between this piece and the fold. You might not want that much, but I'm right on the money there. So we'll go ahead and fold this. And... Try to get it to lay right on top so everything's uniform. And there we go. Now, next, we want to go ahead and do our creases that we just created here. I had one of the distress things, the shaded lilac, and brought it over here. And I tried it, but it's too blue. I mean, you wouldn't think purples would be that far apart, but... It was just too blue for what I wanted to do here. Can you see? And then with this one, it's a it's a tad on the darker side, but it goes really well with what's in there. So don't don't hesitate to take a scrap out of your trash can and test it and see if it works well with what you have. All right, now we're going to take it and we're going to fold it the other way. I'm going to give me a better contrast there. Now we're folding it this way. And 
oops, it's trying to run off on me. There we go. Do this side. Yeah, it's not, it's not a hard project. It's very easy. It just, you know, you can decorate it up to the hilt or you can have it you know, a debutante <laughs> and not have much but pearls on it. <laughs> that kind of thing. And we're going to go ahead and get a little bit more of our sweet plum out. And we're going to do these, these creases. Now, I'm also going to do the inside because that really, really enhances the look, I believe. And I'm going to show you what I mean when we get that done. Especially since it's just purple in there. It's not really much to speak for it. So let's do this side. Oops. Do this one. And this one. Yeah, in the case of when you have minimal minimal decorating, the inking will sometimes really help out a lot. Now let's see what this looks like. Let me just do these two middle ones and I'll let you decide. Oops, I think I inked a little all over the place with that one. <laughs> okay, now see it gives a little bit of a, a contrast there that I think really helps it, but you do have to bend it back to get it to react. The more you bend it back, the better. <laughs> okay. I'm having one of those days. I think my brain is fried. It's only in the 70s here, but it must the humidity bit must be up. I just hung clothes out and it's gonna call for some possible thunderstorms, so I gotta keep a ear out and an eye out for that because I just hung all my goodies on the line. Some of them were jeans. They will take a while. All right, we're as, <laughs> we're as good as it gets and then we'll get to the uh, tags and stuff later. I'm not going to do the outside edges of the rest of this. I don't think so. Let me look. Oh, let me, I'll, I'll do that too. Okay, that's all done. <laughs> Sorry, Phyllis, I did it off screen. All right, so now what we need to do is to remember the larger piece is going to be at the top. This three and a half piece, or the three inch piece is at the bottom. The three and a half piece is at the top. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> so we're going to fold this back up. This is the piece that's going to have something on it to um to hold it shut so we got to get in here and cut our little goodies and get them completed because i just decided this is what i want to have to hold it shut the other little guy had i don't know i had it from another paper pad but those little little scripty things and then I had to find some roses. That, well, that one I mostly did roses. This one's lilac. That's kind of out of season. But oh well. <laughs> that's it's all how it goes. I don't I don't know what season we have anymore because those deer are just eating everything. I, there's grass. I don't know what they're doing. People are. We're doing hay fields now, but no, they want flowers. It's almost like we're, we're growing flowers for them to eat and graze on. We had a group of little bucks with the velvet on out here the other day, and they were eating the little peaches that had fell off the tree. I guess they were peaches that didn't ripen very well, or something happened that they just didn't, you know, do good. <laughs> All right. Uh, but we have the wildlife. Mom was down telling me when we went to eat that she had a fox down there. And uh, she saw him the one day. And he kind of 
went across her garden area and then another day she saw him and he was sleeping I guess in her dog house she's got a dog house down there it's not it used to be for a dog but it's not anymore it's just decoration she has a cement dog she sets out in front of it like he's real you know <laughs> but he he must have been sleeping in there and ran off when she came through so <laughs> all kinds of stuff around here i'm trying to see if i've got anything well i guess not let's see what we got here so the way i'm hoping this works is kind of like this where these are basically going to go about right like that. They're about three and a half tall. So this piece is three. So I've got like a half of an inch over. And then if I go under, oops, let me measure that. You don't want to glue too far. I did that mistake before. <laughs> uh, so... It's, it's meeting at the two, so the one and a quarter mark is like the mark I probably want to go with. I'm going to put that mark right here, and then right here, and I'm going to use that for both, all three of them, to judge by. And now I want to go around each one of these with a little bit of the ink, just to make them pop out. All right, not popping enough. Pop out some more. Yeah, we usually have skunks and possums. I haven't seen that many skunks, though, to tell you the truth. And I've seen a possum now and then. And uh, raccoons. We always have the raccoons. I, I haven't seen them lately, but... They probably done ate everything out of my pond that they wanted, so now they done moved on. That's why I don't go out there and do that much anymore. They just, they destroy it. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to put this, glue this down with some wet glue. And get these all figured out. Like I said, I gotta go buy buy this um <laughs> put my finger there there we go kind of put that down and see how it does now if you didn't want all this tag i thought the tag might make it easier if you chose to do these especially if you have a stamperia pad and you can see you don't have to find all these little pieces and parts that I've got because these pads almost always come with tags. I always choose my pads from Stamperia to make them work worth, you know, get the most worth out of it, I should say. So I get the ones with the ephemera and pieces that I think would do me well in journals like i'll take some pages and just use them in journals if they go with the theme you know they do a great job there they're already decorated on both sides and uh, they really look pretty all right <laughs> well this one has a different top than these two <laughs> i don't think i'm gonna let it worry me <laughs> all right now this one definitely i want for the front or no i didn't all right it's gonna go like this and then it's gonna go like this and i thought i wanted that for the front but then i have my little cluster that i thought was cute that i could put on the front hmm now, see, this is almost right on the money. It's going to take up that whole front. And then I need one for here. Well, I'll tell you what. Maybe I'll put one of these on the dead center inside. 
Maybe I'll do that green one in here. Do I want him on the front or do I want him on the front? I think I want this big one. And then I'll have this one. Well, this has got a button on it. <laughs> Me and my wishy-washiness. Okay, we're putting this one here. The front will be the one with my cluster because it's got a button and I'm afraid it's not going to go shut when he hits the button. It's a little on the bulky side. So are we going to do, do just like this? Oh my goodness. It's times like this that I wish we had a pull. The only thing we have is a creek down the road. <clears throat> now it's a spring, so it, it's cold. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, it's people throws trash in there and you don't know if you're going to be cutting your foot wide open with glass or anything. <clears throat> now when we were young, this is not too close to us, but it's about 30, 40 minutes away. We would go to uh, Todd Lake. And that's a place up the road, and um, it has, you know, like a fishing, you can fish and swim. They have it kind of roped off the amount that you can swim in, and then the rest of it's lake where you can pull your boat out, and then you got uh, the whole lake side where it kind of leads down to like a little river that feeds into it. And it's a campground there and everything. We used to we used to go camp long ago in my youth. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just, you know, another thing from the past. Did I do that crooked? I think I did. Well, no, it don't look crooked. <sighs> Alright. Just make sure I get old. All right, now I got to cut this one. So yeah, we would always have the, one of those pop-up campers, and when we were little, we would go. Now, I don't know what kind of fish was actually in this lake. I don't really think there was much. You had to go up the creek that fed into it to get any trout, and it wasn't all that big of a, a you know, a, a river or whatever stream. And then when you went down to swim, if you had a freckle or a pimple or anything on your legs, those little crappies would bite you. <laughs> so you always had to be aware that they were swimming around you, hunting for an uh, imperfection. <laughs> oh my gosh. You wouldn't think that they would bite very hard, but they did. Let's see, do I have enough room? I think I got to cut a little bit of this off, and I'm going to go for the top since it doesn't have that much to it. <laughs> yeah, those little indiscriminate fish. <laughs> uh, and of course, mom, she gave us the freckles, so most of us had freckles. <laughs> but boy, it felt good on a hot day. There wasn't nothing to get under, though. There was trees once you got off the beach. And I always like to go piddle around with the uh, different creeks and stuff. I mean, I was always into the creeks where I could find critters and uh, mad toms and crawdads and any kind of little fish and... Oh, the one place that we always loved to go was, it's called Back Creek, and it's Blowing Springs, and it's over, it's still in Bath County, Virginia, but it's um, close to the West Virginia border, and what we would do is we'd get a camping spot there too, and we would always try to get one, number one or number two, and camp there because those walked right down had a path go straight down to the creek and um it was it was a, a very shallow creek maybe you know that much a foot there was one spot that had a 
a sitting rock and everything that you could swim at, but it, it wasn't very much of an area to swim. Oh, I got to do that one too. So it was like, you know, kind of fun. I'm, I'm into fossils, you know, and there was fossils. The whole creek, every rock you found had fossils. I loved it. <laughs> I was always out there trying to find something to take home. <laughs> And uh, they were just like little round things most times. You didn't see anything extravagant. Let me see if I can get that shut. There we go. And then I have something on that one. Now this is where you have to test and see if you cut enough away from the score line that we did at the very beginning is when you go to shut these. Now, they're, they're not that thick, so, you know, you can put these in a pocket, easy. You can give them away as um, happy mail. Do I want to put purple around the outside edge of this one? Let me test it right here. Yeah, let's do that. At first, I didn't think I wanted to, but I thought... Whenever I put my little clusters in to whatever book I'm going to do them in, I would let that make the call for me. So, yeah, and then there was another spot up the creek from Back Creek that we would go. And it was kind of on private property, but I think everybody went there. It It always had... The river was always flowing in a kind of a different spot there. It had different channels. And the one channel was always like um, kind of closed off from the rest. So it was really warm and you could wade through it. And uh, there was tons of tadpoles. These I remember going up there one time. And this frog, she must have had a million eggs inside of her. Because what she did was she laid those eggs all through that warm area, a uh, little pond area, and it was like, you could see the sack. It was like a little tube, uh, like a, I don't know, what would you call it? Like a an air hose. Yeah, that's exactly what need, I need to describe it as. It looked exactly like an air hose. And there was all these little black specks in it. I guess she was cleaning herself out or something because there was tons of them, tons and tons. Okay, next I got a couple of stamp sets that Jody Martin sent me. Thank you, Jody. And um, I thought I would use that to stamp around. This is sort of French, the Carta Pistoli. <laughs> so we are going to use, like I like this big dark one. It says 107 Rue de la Chapelle. <laughs> I know I'm hurting somebody's ears out there. I just know it. Um, I do have somebody that watches me from France, so I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Um, okay. I'm going to keep using the Sweet Plum because it's a kind of a darker color. Let's see if that will work for us. This I've not used before, so I'm going to have to do a little <clears throat> stamp off here and see if it'll work. Yeah, see, that does a good job. It doesn't look like it's going on very deeply, but it is. Okay, so let's see if I can. I'm going to have to move this up. I got that button in my way, so I've got to get it up here. There we go. And redo it. <laughs> All right. So I'd like this to be on the bottom right here yeah and I'll stamp it off yeah the one didn't get <laughs> taken too well but that's all right all right what else is on here I've got some round marks let's see oh I got oh, I got perf perfume violet we're going to go with that one. I think this will fit on here very well. And that will go at the top side. 
because these are very violet looking colors to me. Okay. I'm going to go up here to the side, try to even it out with the top line. There. Yeah. That did something for that area. And then I've got enough round things with the the cancellation stickers, but in here I might want to do a little bit of the round. So let's pick this one. <laughs> I've got all kinds of stamping blocks, don't I? Let's pick this one. I don't think I've used it yet, so I'll stamp it off first and see how it works. Oof, I got that purple everywhere. Ugh. <laughs> Yep, I'm not quite sure what it says, but yeah. <laughs> All right, let's stamp him right here. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> yeah, I did stamp kind of off, but that's all right. We'll do another one over here so it's kind of balanced. Try to do it closer to what right side up this time. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell if it was. I can't even read it. All right, that one's done. Next, don't want to date. We've got 1858 or 1874. Let's go for 74. Whoops. I don't think I've used that one. Mm. <laughs> I think it's at a slant. It's kind of throwing me off. Yeah, <laughs> it's very slanted. All right, 1874. Yeah, see, it's, it's giving it a little bit. It needed something. There just wasn't anything here. Um, maybe another word, and there, well, there's Paris, let's go ahead and take the Paris word, it's kind of small, just put that right here, and one more for the other side. Let's see. I've got a registry. Let's go with that one. It's a nice dark word. Okay. So it's going to go right there. Yep. I'm happy with that. I don't know that I need any inside. I kind of think I need, need something there. Uh, don't quite know what, unless it'd be another one of them circles. I think I've circled it too much. Let's take this little funny looking thing here and put it on there. I don't know exactly what that is, but it'll be something different. So I'll do it like right like that. <laughs> something scrolly all right I think I've got everything I want off of this one now I want to work with this one maybe on the inside so let me get that up and out of the way open these up and see what I've got hmm. so what do I want to do in here I thought I'd just add a couple things. Not a lot. Uh, I, I really like this 45 cent thingy here. I've always been fascinated with it. So, And I've used these before so I don't have to stamp off on anything. Mm. 
Okay. So I'll put that kind of like right over here in this corner. Okay. <laughs> I've got something, something on the outside that's hitting it. Crap. My button. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get the 45 to at least go on there and maybe some of that. I don't want the outside itch. <sighs> All right, that's about as good as it's going to get. It looks it looks old. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, the uh, the button hindered me. Shame on you, button. And I I spoke up for you. <laughs> I did. I did. You turned on me. Okay, what else do I want? Maybe this little, whatever it is, calculation kind of area could go on the other side. Oh, it's got a, a re, um, what do you call it? A cancellation doodlolly on it. <laughs> I'm good with these words, aren't I? Oh, so, yeah. There we go. Just like that. New York. All right, I got a couple little goodies to show you. Um, I did a little shop the other day with Amazon. One of the items in here, but it's just a brayer. And then an, a couple of the other items that came in the pa package was for mom's. <laughs> it was her CeraVe for her birthday. Uh, was that her birthday? No, that was her Mother's Day. <laughs> I've got birthday coming up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so anyhow... This is all we're going to do with this little piece. So I'm going to put the description in the description box. I mean, I'm putting how to make this, the score lines, that kind of thing. So you can go down there if you can't remember or don't want to go back and forth, back and forth on how I did this. So you just have to remember to train it. You might want to push down all the little creases. But here she is. That's what it ended up looking like. I don't know if you needed to see anything else in there. But, yeah. I thought that turned out cute. It's got kind of a butterfly. And that little butterfly out here looks real similar to that little guy. So there he is again. And there's her friend. <laughs> Their cousin. <laughs> Alright. Now what I ordered the other day. Thinking it was going to go... <laughs> with the steampunk so this will be a, a whole nother steampunk for me because it's kind of a different color scheme not not really but it, it kind of looks different so i think i'm gonna make all of this i need to pull that off so it don't glare at you i think i'm gonna make all of this into one book somehow now i needed some more eyelets some of the larger ones so I got all these metal colors. I really needed them. And then I got a brayer, like I mentioned. Uh, the brayer I have, I believe I got it at Michael's. And I really want to get in here and do some uh, jelly printing. I really want to do some of that. So we're going to play with that one day when this new brayer comes in. Because he's a little mini sports car is what Tom, uh, Tim Holt calls it. So that's what I want to use. But let me flip through this real quick. This is called Voyages Fantastics, and it has all the elements, uh, but the back side of the pages are all like just solid or, you know, the one pattern kind of deal. I really like the look of the lady. She has metallic wings, and he's got all these gadgets on his hat, and there's the train. There's nothing like a dream to create the future. I like that. And you've got a metallic clock. It says time machine. I kept thinking of Orson Welles. <laughs> Don't hit me. <laughs> I love Orson Welles. This dude, he's riding his bike backwards. I guess he's testing his wings out. And then you have a space on the back where you can write. And this will be the one when I do another of these steampunk journals. This will be what I use. Here you've got all the... You got the Eiffel Tower down in here, and you got all these balloons and gears, and look at those things. I don't know what that is. Oh, I guess it's like uh, the cords going between the two. And see, here's that same background paper again. The same one as the first page. 
uh, and then it's kind of got a teal and a beigey kind of background that, that follows through on all this. Here's the time machine one again. A different background, uh, yet still sort of the same. <laughs> you've got the world, and you got Le Balloon, and then Le Balloon backwards over here. But I guess this is all about the different uh, flying vessels. Now this is kind of a cute little background. I like that one. And uh, then you've got kind of an overall. I'm not sure what's going on there. This is not... Um, it's not journal cards, it's, but it almost could be, because this line goes completely up here, and then you can cut this top part off of it. But over here, I don't really see where that can happen, because you'd be cutting the clock in half. So, yeah. <laughs> Unless you cut it, like, right there, right at the tip, top, bottom of that clock. Uh, then you've got a really dark background on that one. Really dark. Here is the train kind of things, I guess. you got wings on the train. A balloon. And look at that background. That's even darker. <laughs> Good grief. Here's the tags. Um, here's the guy going backwards on his bike. And here's the bike in this direction with an extra booster on it. <laughs> and you just have everything here that I've seen so far, except for this. I haven't seen that yet. Or the ever-present eye. <laughs> and here's the guy with his gadget on his head. I really love the time machine one, though. And then you've got, like, a tag on the back, so it's plain you could write on it. And here's another one of them little things where you can possibly just cut it apart for journal cards. And then it's got like, I don't even know where that's at. This is Amerique. Oh, that's South America. And then Occidentals is what they have for America. <laughs> so, I'm not quite sure what they're going with there. They got Ocean... Oriental. Mer uh, I don't know what that is. That must be another language. You know how I am with the languages. Uh, this is kind of pretty. I like this one. I like the background. Now this one's got more dark background. So see there's a lot of dark. Now I guess this is fussy cutting. Or you could cut it apart for journal cards or tags or however you wanted to go about it. Now, this was interesting because on the back, it's got all these uh, dictionary things. And I don't know if it's got something in there. It's supposed to be something that goes with steampunk or not. And then here's that little flower again. I had that twice, didn't I? Yep, there it is again. So this one here is tw in there twice, and that one's in there twice. Ugh. And then you've got the back. So, I just wanted to give you an eyeball of that. So, in case you were interested in that as a steampunk uh, journal to do for the future. I don't know when I'll start it, but maybe later this year. <laughs> All right. I want to thank everybody for coming to visit. I hope you got to see uh, some items that uh, was interesting to you and how to do that little flip out. Because I know it was a viewer request. So everybody have a great, great day. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.